bring it out. He's going to talk about Bitcoin Cash adoption, not just in Japan, but around the world. It is Roger Ver. Hello, everyone. What an exciting uh, spirit in the room today. Just like uh, in the earliest days of Bitcoin, when we knew we were going to change the entire world by bringing this digital peer-to-peer -peer cash for the world. And everybody in this room still appreciates that, uh, that spirit. So uh, excited to, I'm very excited to be here with you all. And uh, we're going to talk about Bitcoin Cash being Bitcoin. And we're going to make it cash again, just like it was in the earliest days. So uh, right before this, actually, I was reviewing my slides one more time to make sure that uh, I was going to be prepared and be able to do a good job. And I realized that uh, a lot of the slides we saw earlier today from other presenters were very similar, which shows that we all have uh, very similar mindsets as to what Bitcoin is supposed to be all about. And uh, my very next slide here, I'm sure you guys have all seen before. What is Bitcoin? <laughs> it's very, very clear. It's right there in the title. It's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And if you're opposed to Bitcoin being used as cash, well, then you're opposed to Bitcoin. And it's not the fact that Bitcoin is called Bitcoin that makes it important. It's the fact that Bitcoin is usable as cash for the entire world in an uncensorable manner in which nobody can block your payments or freeze your account or control it in any way. It's those characteristics that make Bitcoin important. It's not the fact that it's called Bitcoin. So here we have a, a set of criteria for what, uh, what Bitcoin is supposed to be all about and our sources for what makes the word Bitcoin have its meaning. And uh, those sources are, of course, the Bitcoin white paper. What, what better place to start for a definition of what Bitcoin is? Satoshi Nakamoto's forum posts and emails, the creator of Bitcoin, right? That's a pretty good source to go to for what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin. Uh, and of course, Bitcoin.org, uh, I think the very first website to start promoting Bitcoin ever. And then uh, older BitcoinTalk.org posts and uh, any article about Bitcoin from earlier on and uh, some empirical evidence as well. And uh, I made a chart listing some of those characteristics, comparing both Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Cash with those characteristics. And if you read the white paper saying that Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, well, it's very, very clear that Bitcoin Cash is that. And if you go and read or listen to any of the things that the Bitcoin core supporters are saying, you'll hear very clearly that they're opposed to Bitcoin being used as cash. Well, if Bitcoin is defined in the very title of the white paper as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, and Bitcoin core supporters are opposed to Bitcoin being used as cash, then they're opposed to Bitcoin. And some other things that are talked about on Bitcoin.org are Bitcoin having low fees. Well, Bitcoin Cash has that. Bitcoin Core doesn't. Fast payments, Bitcoin Cash has it, Bitcoin Core doesn't. Reliable payments, Bitcoin Cash has it, Bitcoin Core doesn't. And the list goes on and on there, including on-chain scaling, non-reversible payments, being a chain of digital signatures, the opcodes, hooray, they've been re-enabled. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has all of those things, Bitcoin Core doesn't. Uh, one thing that they both have is one CPU, one vote, or one, one SHA-256 hash, one vote. Both Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Cash both have that. And to be fair, Bitcoin Core has a longer chain with more proof of work stacked upon it than Bitcoin Cash does. And that's certainly a very important metric, but I don't think it's as important of a metric as it being usable as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system as defined in the very title of the white paper. So if you look at these definitions we have here, it's very, very clear that Bitcoin Core has more Bitcoinness than Bitcoin, I'm sorry, Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoinness than Bitcoin Core. But again, it's not the word Bitcoin that's important. It's the underlying characteristics that make it useful as money for the entire world that make it useful. So you can call it whatever you want, but it's the fact that it's useful that makes it important. And we have some more examples here of how uh, it's changed over time. Again, from Bitcoin.org. I feel like we saw this slide earlier today. <laughs> but uh, Bitcoin used to be fast with low fees, and today the website says just peer-to-peer -peer transactions with fraud protection, whatever, whatever that means in this case. And here we have a, a clip from an early news article back in 2010, and it says, 
How is this for a disruptive technology? Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer network-based digital currency, right? Currency means money, with no central bank and no transaction fees. Well, that's certainly not true of Bitcoin Core today, and that's certainly not uh, true of, uh, of the Bitcoin that the Bitcoin Core team want to have in the future. But if you stop and think about it, the Bitcoin that's being described in that quote from 2010 is the Bitcoin that led to mass adoption around the world, to people getting excited about it and singing songs about it and making t-shirts about it and building apps about it and begging their local shops to accept it and telling their friends how to use it. And that's the version of Bitcoin that the world got excited about. Uh, a slow, expensive, unreliable Bitcoin in name only version isn't the sort of thing that the world gets excited about. And again, here's an article from uh, 2011 uh, talking about how Bitcoin has low fees and you know, they're excited about it for these same reasons. And uh, that's Bitcoin Cash today. It's not Bitcoin Core today. And here we have uh, an article from 2017 where it talks about how skyrocketing fees are fundamentally changing Bitcoin and how originally one of Bitcoin's big selling points was that the payments would be fast, convenient, and cheap. Well, I know a version of Bitcoin that has fast, convenient, and cheap payments, and it's Bitcoin Cash, <laughs> not Bitcoin Core any longer. And uh, here we have a quote from Satoshi Nakamoto saying the fee market would settle, we should settle on is minimal. It could, be, uh, it could do more volume and probably would make more money by processing as many transactions as it can. Well, that's the economic roadmap that Bitcoin Cash is following today, and Bitcoin Core is not. And interestingly enough, uh, we have a quote from, uh, from Thamos here saying that many transactions are typically processed in a way where no fee is expected at all. But for transactions which draw coins from many Bitcoin addresses and therefore have a large data size, a small transaction fee is usually expected. Can I see who here has made a zero fee, absolutely no fee whatsoever Bitcoin transaction? Yeah, a lot of people in the room here. And that's a sign that you've been involved in Bitcoin for a while, because that's how Bitcoin transactions used to be. The vast majority of Bitcoin transactions were completely free with no fee whatsoever. And it wasn't until much later that uh, the Bitcoin core people decided that they wanted to turn Bitcoin's economic code up, uh, upside down. And here we can see that from 2009 until 2017, Bitcoin was the best form of money to ever exist. And we list a bunch of the characteristics here that make money money like being fungible, non-consumable, portable, durable, highly divisible, secure, easily transactable, scarce. And you can see that Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin, that's still alive and well in the form of Bitcoin Cash today, has more of those characteristics than any other form of money. And unfortunately, something then happened. The blocks became full, and that was a fundamental change to Bitcoin, because in the entire history of Bitcoin, from day one up until 2016 or 17 there, the blocks had always had extra room within the blocks. And it was because the blocks became full that Bitcoin lost many of its characteristics that made it good money. Not only that, but then the adoption rate stagnated. Whereas we used to see continuous adoption week after week, month after month, year after year, of more and more businesses around the world using Bitcoin in commerce, using Bitcoin to pay their friends and family or do international remittances and using it for all sorts of things around the world, when the blocks became full, that adoption ground to a halt. And not only did it ground, grind to a halt, but we actually started to see some, uh, some businesses stopping using Bitcoin. And as one of the very first people in the world lobbying businesses to start using Bitcoin and telling them how this was the best form of money the world has ever seen, it absolutely broke my heart and just literally brought me to tears some evenings seeing this happen to Bitcoin. Where big giant businesses that companies like Coinbase and BitPay and others had worked so hard to bring on board and get them to start using Bitcoin were then stopping using Bitcoin because a small group of people using censorship and propaganda online convinced a portion of the world that Bitcoin was never meant to be used as money despite the fact that it was right there in the very title of the white paper. And so we saw these big businesses that used to be accepting Bitcoin stopping. And that brings us to where we are today, where Bitcoin core usage is at a two-year low, where fewer people are making Bitcoin transactions today than have at any point in the last two years. 
and that's the first time ever in the entire history of Bitcoin in which that has happened. And it's not just chance that it happened. It happened because the blocks were allowed to become full, which caused the fees to become high, which caused the transactions to become unreliable, which caused people to stop using Bitcoin Core. But uh, luckily, we're here at a Bitcoin Cash conference, and all of us know that uh, Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin and has the original economic code of Bitcoin, and that uh, all of these problems are being solved on Bitcoin because we've been hearing about all the adoption that happened. But we'll need to be careful moving into the future, and it's worth pointing out that uh, the problems that we saw happen with Bitcoin Core, these weren't technological problems, these weren't technological failures, these were human failures. And we saw people that didn't understand Bitcoin. And we saw some of these quotes from people. And in the bottom left here, we have Adam Back, uh, the CEO of Blockstream, talking about how he thinks people would be willing to pay $100 in fees to make Bitcoin transactions. Well, as one of the very, very first people in the entire world to start accepting Bitcoin as payments in my own business, back in 2011, memorydealers.com, and then setting up the very first large website to start accepting Bitcoin for more than half a million consumer electronic products called bitcoinstore.com, which was the impetus to get businesses like overstock.com and Newegg and Tiger Direct and all these other businesses to start accepting Bitcoin. I have news for you. If the fees are $100 per transaction, I'm not going to use it, and, and nobody else is either. And uh, not only is it for, for, it's not for rich people in first world countries only, it's for people in poor countries as well. And we see, you know, this chief strategy officer of Blockstream saying that Bitcoin is not for people that earn less than $2 a day. And if the fees are $100 per transaction, he's right. But uh, if the fees are $100 per transaction, it's not cash. It's not the, what's defined in the original Bitcoin white paper. And Bitcoin cash with its fees of less than a penny can be used by anyone anywhere in the world. And here we have it. We can see that uh, people were convinced by Bitcoin Core with their censorship and propaganda online that Bitcoin doesn't scale. And people began looking for the next big thing. And we can see a direct correlation here when the blocks became full. And I feel like we saw a very, very slimmer, similar slide to this earlier today. But as soon as the blocks became full on Bitcoin, altcoins started skyrocketing in, in popularity. But guess what? Bitcoin Cash does scale. And that's why all of us are here today. And just like Bitcoin in the early days, when we saw merchants around the world starting to take it up and use it in their business, we're seeing the exact same things happen with Bitcoin Cash today, with businesses all over the world starting to use it in commerce. And we've talked about seeing slides uh, previously earlier today. I feel like I've I feel like I've been here and done this once before, the first time around. But we're doing it again with Bitcoin Cash. And we're seeing adoption all over the world and merchant uptake and people all over the world starting to use it as money because it's actually useful as money. And here's a list of all sorts of Bitcoin businesses around the world. Pretty much every exchange already supports Bitcoin Cash. The vast majority of wallets, all sorts of services are being built on top of Bitcoin Cash. And we're seeing businesses around the world start to use it as well. And it's really exciting to see it starting to happen the second time around. And as someone who set up some of the very, very first Bitcoin meetups in the entire world, uh, including the Tokyo Bitcoin meetup and being one of the original founders of the Silicon Valley Bitcoin meetup, we're seeing the exact same thing happen around the world now with Bitcoin cash meetups around the world. And the community is growing all over the place, uh, I think even faster this time around than it did with uh, Bitcoin the first time around. And so we all need to know that uh, the reason we're here today is because we're going to make Bitcoin cash again. And so let's forget the hold mentality. Let's work on building services that incentivize uh, usage. And so we heard earlier today that purse.io has their Bitcoin cash in, uh, in beta there, I believe. Purse.io is one of the websites that really made me excited about uh, Bitcoin. So it allows anybody to receive a giant discount on purchases from Amazon.com. And uh, I've been waiting for them to integrate Bitcoin Cash finally. I, I've known it's coming for a while, but it's, uh, it's taken a little bit longer than I would have liked. But I'm really, really excited to be able to start promoting that again, because uh, with Bitcoin Cash, it's usable. With Bitcoin Core, it's not very usable any longer. So uh, let's work 
on creating demand for these services by building all the businesses that actually make Bitcoin cash usable as cash for the world. And again, there's no CEO of Bitcoin Cash. There's no CEO of Bitcoin. It's just up to all of us to build businesses and to tell our friends and tell our family and help them get involved. So uh, the fact that you're all here at this wonderful Bitcoin Cash conference shows that you're motivated. So when you go home from this conference, make sure you set up your family and your friends and your neighbors with Bitcoin Cash wallets. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Um, of course, I love the Bitcoin.com wallet, but I love the other ones too. We have blockchain.info. We have Coinbase, which is a Bitcoin bank. And it's very important to distinguish between a Bitcoin wallet and a Bitcoin bank, but there are certainly places for Bitcoin banks. Coinbase has done a fantastic job of making it easy to buy or sell Bitcoin cash all over the world. Uh, we just heard from Coin, one of the biggest exchanges in Asia, uh, another fantastic service to be able to get Bitcoin. But it's up to us to go out there and tell everybody how to use it and spread the word and show them. And uh, we can talk about the original investment strategy in Bitcoin. The first one is to buy some Bitcoin cash invest in some companies that help promote and make the currency uh, more useful. And then you can profit just by holding Bitcoin cash as it becomes cash for the entire world. So what a fun thing to be able to do. You can earn money at the same time you bring more individual economic freedom to the world. And you improve the lives of every single person on the planet by bringing more individual economic freedom to those people as you earn money at the same time. So it's really, really, really a uh, a fun, fun, wonderful thing when what's philosophically right and what's financially rewarding have such great synergy together. And so uh, if you haven't already, please give Bitcoin Cash a try right now. Uh, Wallet.bitcoin.com, you can download it. And here's another example of something that, uh, who here in this room got their first Bitcoin from a Bitcoin faucet? Yeah, I see quite a few hands in the room as well. So I received my very first Bitcoin ever from Gavin Andreessen's Bitcoin faucet. Bitcoin faucets today are impossible on Bitcoin Core. The fees are too high. It's not possible. There's an example of how Bitcoin Core is no longer Bitcoin. But thankfully, on Bitcoin Cash, faucets are very easily. So anybody, anywhere in the world that goes to free.bitcoin.com, you can get some free Bitcoin Cash sent right there to your wallet, just like Bitcoin in the earliest days. So tell your friends about free.bitcoin.com, and they'll get some free Bitcoin just like that. And then uh, our latest product that we have uh, is markets.bitcoin.com, where you can watch Bitcoin Cash gain more and more market share compared to these other uh, alt altcoins that are listed there. So uh, markets.bitcoin.com is a fantastic service. And uh, lastly, go out there and build, right? This ecosystem, this better world isn't going to build itself. It's up to us to go out there and do that. So. Uh, Please go out there and do that and tell your friends and family, and uh, it's up to all of us. So thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. Questions? All right. We've got about five to seven minutes for some questions for the great strutting Roger Ver. Questions? Yes. You. Yes. Uh, there's one right now. There you go. Uh, hi, Roger. My name's Harrison. I've been a huge fan of you since uh, the early days of promoting Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin um, as peer-to-peer -peer digital cash for the world. Um, in terms of uh, Bitcoin.com, do you still have plans to support Bitcoin Cash on the debit card solution for Bitcoin.com? Yes, we're working, working very, very hard at that. I was hoping to have been able to announce that about a month ago. Um, so all I can say at the moment is stay tuned, but we haven't forgotten about it. That's very important to us. That's a very important part of this ecosystem to be able to have those on-ramps and off-ramps from Bitcoin Cash to the legacy uh, system. So uh, we haven't forgotten about that, and, and stay tuned. So, and I apologize for the delay. I'm sure it's not your fault. <laughs> it's so my responsibility. Things, things take so. time. Yes, uh, more questions for Roger. Any more questions? Uh, here, let's go with this nice gentleman over here. Hi, my name is Christian from Germany. Um, I'll read my, my question. Um, how, we, how can we increase adoption so that people that do not care about Bitcoin will start to care? With that, I'm referring to people that still associate Bitcoin with the dark net and Ill illegal commerce. And even after I talk with them, think of it as, as a geek niche preferring and prefer paying with PayPal or credit cards. And in other words, um, what has the potential to become the, the killer app for Bitcoin Cash? I think the killer app for Bitcoin Cash is using it as cash. And we have to find businesses and that we can build that demonstrate how Bitcoin Cash is better cash than US dollars, than, than Russian rubles, than the euro, than the yen, than the, everything else. 
And again, a fantastic example of that is purse.io. That's a fantastic example that needs to have Bitcoin Cash uh, completely available on its system. And so once we show people financial reasons, people that aren't philosophically libertarians or philosophically you know, opposed to the wars that you know, central banks are able to fund, people that don't care about any of that, we have to give them financial reasons that they feel right in their pocketbook that motivate them to use Bitcoin Cash. So let's build the businesses that do that. And again, one of my favorite examples is purse.io for that. Okay, a couple more questions. Yay, purse.io. Everyone give them a round of applause. I like a good purse. Thank you so much for everything you do. Um, I, I'm wondering, I really agree with you that there's sort of a human problem, maybe. And I, I read a really great article by Emin Gunserer about uh, who's got your back in crypto. And basically the conclusion was the miners, their incentives are really well aligned with providing security. But it seems like maybe the weak link in the chain is actually the developers. Um, and basically, fortunately, we have good developers like Amori who have rescued us from, frankly, not very good developers. And I wonder um, if you have any thoughts about in the future, maybe that sort of becoming more like a self-cleaning plumbing or whether there are other ways to prevent um, something like what happened recently happening again in the future. So in order to prevent that sort of thing from happening again, I, I think one of the things that I really made a mistake on was uh, I really, really underestimated just how effective the censorship was going to be when it started within the Bitcoin ecosystem. Because when the censorship first started, everybody that was involved in Bitcoin at that time knew it was a bunch of BS and that the people that were engaged in the censorship were a bunch of liars and manipulators. And everybody knew the truth at that point. But then all sorts of new people came into the Bitcoin ecosystem after the censorship had already started. And they were only allowed to hear the censored narrative and because they were only allowed to hear the censored narrative, they assumed that that was the true narrative. And as the ecosystem grew, but all the new people that were coming into Bitcoin only heard the censored narrative, eventually they became the majority and they believed that Bitcoin wasn't meant to be cash and that Bitcoin shouldn't have low fees and that Bitcoin can't scale. And they were tricked into believing all of these lies. And a lot of it was because the people that spoke up against the censorship or against the lies were just attacked incredibly, incredibly online by you know, sock puppet after sock puppet and some real people after real people that probably came to Bitcoin much later and were influenced by the sock puppets into believing those, those falsehoods. And so I think a really important thing that we should all be doing is look around out there and even if everybody else out there in the world is saying that the sky is green, if you know the sky is blue, you should say the sky is blue because maybe there's a bunch of other people out there that also know the sky is blue but they hear everybody else around them saying that the sky is green. And so they don't want to rock the boat and they don't say anything. And they feel like they're all alone because nobody else is saying that the sky is actually blue. And I think that's the exact situation here in Bitcoin. So many people out there are saying Bitcoin can't scale. And there's so few voices that are saying that it can scale. That uh, the people that are out there that they they can do the math. It's easy to do the math. Bitcoin can scale to be money for the entire world on chain. That was one of the very first things that I looked at when I got involved in Bitcoin. And so if nobody speaks up and says that, everybody will just feel like they're all alone and they're the only ones. So it's so incredibly important for us in this room to speak out and be that voice of truth. So that all these people out there on the internet and in real life that feel like they're all alone in this viewpoint that Bitcoin was supposed to be money for the world, when they hear us speaking out, they will feel emboldened to speak out too and they'll realize that they're not the only ones in the world that believe this. So when everybody else is saying something but you know something else to be the truth, that's when it's the most important to speak out and say the truth so that the other people out there that maybe believe the same thing will realize that they're not alone in the world. So let's, uh, let's not let censorship uh, control the narrative again in the future. All right, on that note, remember, speak out, speak the truth. Thank you. This, uh, <laughs> Give me a hug, Jimmy. Great job today, uh, Jimmy. Thanks, Give it up sir. for the best MC in all of the crypto coin ecosystem. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Roger. Give it for Roger Burr.